Hello everybody. So tonight I'm going to mix, do some color mixing for the color of my yard. Uh, this month's reference image of the apple with the leaves. Now just like our size and placement and our value study, we did not copy. The same is true for color. We want to come up with a color scheme and then use that color scheme on our painting. Okay, so we're going to dive right in and get to the palette and talk about our color scheme. But basically what I want to do is I want to play with the color red this month. It's a little bit of a funny color. It's a little bit dark to be our center point. And that, so our red apple, we want that lit, a lit red for our color and light. And then we want a red shadow. And then our leaves, we're gonna make kind of a cool blue, green and light and a warmer green and shadow. Then we have our tabletop and our background. And for our tabletop, we're just gonna go a weaker red. So we had a lit red and we had red in shadow. And then the tabletop, it's gonna be a neutral orange, red, brown. That's just gonna be weaker than the reds of our shadow and our uh, color in our light. And then in the background, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a weaker green, a more neutral green. So we'll have the cool green and the warm green in the leaves. And then we want a green value in between those two and weaker or more neutral. Okay, so that's the goal. Let's get right to the palette and uh, mix those, those colors up. Are we all switched over, sweetie? Yeah. Okay. Hello, ladies. So the first question is, is what is our main color, right? We want to start with our finish. And since we're going to make this a red apple, this is the red. So this is my CAD red light. You know, let's go through the color. So burnt umber, CAD red light, yellow ochre, white, ultramarine blue, and ivory black. I think I'm using um, flake white replacement because that's usually what I use. You could use titanium white if you want. Um, so for our red, that's a beautiful strong red, but it doesn't necessarily look lit up. Did we lose feed on this camera? All right, let me check the connection. Okay, guys, apologize for that. Let me see. Babe, do you want to come up to the film on me? Because I got to shut down. Okay. All right, guys, this is like the worst, worst video ever. Should probably just start over, but we're going to see if we can power through the technical difficulties. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 
We'll get it, guys. We'll get it. Okay, how's that picture, babe? Yep. Is that color okay? Yep. Okay. The white look okay? We have the highlights yep. on the white? The highlights. Okay. Okay, so let's pick up where we left off, and hopefully this camera won't go again. So we're looking for red, and we want that red to be lit. We light things up by adding a certain amount of white to it. Can you see the difference between the red that's not lit and the red that is? Now you're probably naturally going to prefer, oh, I want it more red. But just do me a favor, prefer light to color and just see what happens. Just see what happens. Let's light that up just a little bit more. Okay, so now I think we've got a nice lit red. Or do we? That went back down, didn't it? That red's so strong. Let's see if it holds up this time. Yeah, something like that. And then the other color we're going to have is green. And in light, it's going to be kind of a blue-green, a cool. So our green will be blue and yellow. That's what we have. And then we want that lit up. Okay, so what do you guys think we need to do from here? Just way too blue, right? So maybe not so much of that. Let's just take a little bit of it. Let's take a bigger piece of our yellow because we want to get over to green. Okay, so now we're in green, but we're a lot darker than we are there. And we don't really feel lit up yet. So the white. And again, quantity matters. And so I just, I'll slowly add until I get a feel of how influential it's going to be. And see, I'm still too dark. Okay, that's feeling better. That's feeling better. And that's a, that's a little too light, isn't it? And it's a little bit yellow. That wouldn't actually look so bad, I don't think. But we need something a little bit stronger so our background can be weaker. So maybe something in there. Now notice, this isn't a brilliant green, is it? It's kind of a gray, dull, blah. Which is fine because this is our color right the main thing is it's got to be strong enough that we can get something weaker behind it so for that reason alone I'm gonna just try to pump up the color a little bit now you see as I did that the value got darker so I need to raise that value back up so we're relatively close there now but the leaves are going to be slightly lighter than our red or at least that's my way I'm going to do it so something like that okay so that was this is just a mixing pile I'll set this over there and this is our pure red that we're not going to use because we want it lit up. Now, how about the red in shadow? So red, but then we want it darker. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to set this over here so then I can get that red background in the middle and make sure it's weaker. 
Then let's take our burnt umber, since we want to keep this in the red family. Black is more neutral, and then blue is obviously blue. The umber is the brown, or in the orange-red family. So that's going to be the most intense red I can get as I darken this down. And if I want to keep getting it darker, I just have to keep adding the umber. Right, and I can leave plenty of color there. Right, okay. So apple in light, apple in shadow. Can you see what a va definite value difference there is? Most people are scared of that when they start, but we want it definite. So let's get our green and shadow. So green is blue and yellow. And remember I said I wanted that warm so that's warmer and compared to that, but the color is so strong. And I don't know that I want us focusing on the shadow of our leaves. So I'm going to take just a little bit of this red at the value and put it in there just so it's not too high chroma, but to neutralize that a little bit. Okay, and this is darker than that. I don't know if I want it that much. I want them pretty close so that they read as the same value. Notice I just add a little bit and then I watch it. Okay, maybe something like that. Green and light, green and shadow. Now notice these aren't beautiful necessarily colors. That's okay. We can have beautiful paintings without what you're usually thinking of as beautiful colors. So go to the, my, go up to me, baby. The what? Shoot uh, the okay. camera on me. On you, it's on me. Okay. All right, we're going to try to restart this thing one more time. And obviously, we need to revisit this program. Okay, baby, you want to see how that goes? What? Dark. That camera's dark? Okay guys, sorry about that. Focusing a little hard trying to set this camera back up. Can you see that camera now? Yep. Okay. All right, so one last time. I've got a couple more piles here I'm gonna mix and that will be that, so.
How does that look, baby? Okay, so one more attempt. So remember we said our tabletop, we want to be somewhere in there, we want to be warm. So if we want it to be weaker than this, what I might do is my burnt umber and then use the yellow ochre to get it to that right value. And if that's still strong, how could we weaken that without adding white? Well, just with black or with a little bit of blue, right? But we've got to watch that value. We don't want it to dip down too much. So we'll have to add, keep adding that yellow to keep that value up. Okay, and then that as it comes into light would be somewhere in here. All right, so there's our warm, the lightest, the middle, and then the shadow, apple in light, tabletop, apple in shadow. We have leaves in light, leaves and shadow so let's get our background then what do we want our background to be well a weak green so instead of blue why don't we start with yellow and black and again get it to the va value that's in between When I grade this off, I'm going to gray it off with a little bit of our red. And now that's getting weaker than our other two, isn't it? As we add a bit of white. Okay, so if that's background, that would fall in between. And then in places in the background, we could make it a stronger color or a weaker color or a lighter value if we wanted. Then, since we did red and green, let's see, this air, well, that would slide right in through there, and then that should slide right in through there, too. <clears throat> For my highlight, let's see, let me go... We go this end on highlight. I'm going to let it just be slightly green. And what that'll do is just give it a little extra pop off of our red. Okay, so. We have apple in light, similar value to the leaves in light. We have background. We have tabletop. Values in between our light and our shadow. And weaker in chroma. Then our shadow, we have red, a little bit stronger again. And then our leaves are green. So again, similar value, but stronger here and a little weaker there. Then for our lightest light or our highlights, we made it just a little bit green. A little blue got in there. That'd be okay too. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Um, how long was that, sweetheart? 19 minutes. Look at that, just under 20 minutes. So we're going to leave it right there. Uh, I'll review this footage on Friday. Excuse me? Okay. Uh, we're going to leave the palette right where it's at. So I mixed up six colors. 
six value colors, basically red and green three times. And then the fourth one highlight would also be a green. So that would be how you could exercise if you want to get started and see how it goes or play with it. So if you have questions Friday, you can um, ask them. Okay, that's it for us. See you guys, I guess, Friday morning.